It's the Virgin Australia spider cam, a wonderful shot of the MCG. The Eagles haven't been here for 106 days, which is a long time. They beat the Tigers on a Friday night. That was round 12. They played just three games away from Domain since June the 19th. At the MCG this afternoon, they're about to wake, make their way out onto this famous, famous cricket ground, the last game of the season. Let's go to Dan. The teams, Dan, are in. Good afternoon to you. A wonderful day for footy. Yeah, great day, Ham. Beautiful day. A big occasion, of course, as well. The team sheets are in. No changes. I can tell you the subs now. Matt Suckling for Hawthorne and Matt Rosa for the West Coast Eagles. Of course, Jack Gunston included on Thursday night. So that forward line looks very potent. Jack, of course, put at 53 goals for the season. Injured in the qualifying final against these West Coast Eagles. For the first time ever, I can say Hawthorne, 19 points players who are 100 game players playing in a grand final. A piece of history. The West Coast Eagles coming off back-to-back -back victories in Perth look very stable and of course they defeated Hawthorne in the qualifying final without Matt Prittis and Chris Marston. Reason for confidence I would suggest is the Hawks come up the race or rather it's the West Coast Eagles. Colours a little bit similar for the West Coast Eagles back at the MCG as Hayne was saying not a lot of experience on this ground this season. I've tipped the West Coast Eagles at least in Western Australia. But I think overall, they've got the team to cause a surprise here this afternoon. I tipped Hawthorne earlier in the week, but I changed the tip. I think Kennedy, Nat, Nui and Lacroix keys this afternoon on this ground. So the MCG won't be a bogey ground, I don't think, for the West Coast Eagles. And they could pick up their fourth premiership. But what an afternoon and expectation. So much to play for on a warm day. Things starting to hot up right here. Let's go back to hanging the boys. Thanks very much, Jack. Uh, outstanding ball. Just three West Coast Eagles players have got grand final experience. Only James Frawley from the Hawks yeah. without. Yeah. Uh, well, the Hawthorne have so battled hard and we know what to expect from them. Uh, the Eagles are the new kid in the block. That's why it's really intriguing and exciting, I reckon, when there's a new kid, a new challenger to the established champions. And we saw the qualifying final a few weeks ago in Perth. Now, you know the, they win the, the hit-outs, uh, West Coast. In fact, I think we might be on the wrong side there, to be honest. But anyway, what happened, the, the, the Eagles won the hit-out, but Hawthorne won the clearances. And that's critical, that whether tonight the hit-outs become clearances and therefore that gives Eagles field yep. position. That, to me, is the starting point of the game. And that man is the man who's most likely to generate the really decisive hit-outs that give you breakaway clearances, not just those quick kicks. Well, they can be on the move before he even goes up. They can be on the outside or the inside. He just has such deft touch. One of the class ruckmen, obviously, of the competition. The Eagles almost won round 19 without Nick Nat. They won the qualifying final. They must come in with high confidence well, against a side that rarely loses. Prittis didn't play that night. And the Nat and Huey Prittis combination, the Nat and Huey Shuey combination, they're the main takeaway player. So he's back in the Eagles team. They've virtually got their best team on the field today, uh, the Eagles. So, uh, But that part of the game is always critical. The 70 or 80 times the umpire's got the footy, puts it back into, the, into play. Who can actually get the ascendancy and the takeaways from those starting points? One of my great grand final memories is Matera on the wing. Couple of wingmen here. Yeah, absolutely. Gaff all Australian this year and Smith. I mean, this is a fantastic matchup. I think both these players, massive keys to the game. If they get hold of the ball and they, they start the link, they start the run, they give their team the first opportunities, they use the ball really well. And that man there, what a wonderful season. Average over 30 posies or on 30 posies. He's just a, he's a great player. And uh, if he has a big influence, that'll go a long way for the Eagles to win this game. Isaac Smith was pretty quiet in the first qualifying final. Yeah, he was coming yeah. off that injury. He'll be yeah. keen to make amends. Wonderful against the Dockers last week. Well, of course, Hawthorne have got Brad Hill. So Hill and Smith, the winger-type players, they run Shannon Hearn, the captain. It's amazing when you're captain of the team, you feel greater responsibility for the team performance. So Shannon Hearn is the Eagles' captain in the hostile environment. Away from their home state, has to lead that charge. Let's go from their captain to their coach, Adam Simpson. He's in the same spot, Lee, as you were in 1990. His first grand final as senior coach. He's with Macca. Good on you, hey, man. Adam, everything seems to be calm. I mean, what's the morning been like so far for you? Yeah, reasonably calm. I don't know if they're faking it or not, but they look relaxed, but I think there's some nerves out there. Is the next hour important? Oh, it's always important you, you prepare well, and it is a different format today with a warm-up and something we're not used to, but we've got to roll with that, and our guys are normally OK, those sort of things. First time you've had Nat and Newey and Prittis in the same team against the Hawks this year. It's got to be some edge for you. 
Well, I didn't know that, so I might bring that up um, for a game. But, oh, look, I thought last time without Pritter we did a really good job at, at winning the footy. And um, no doubt Pritter will help that. And, and Nick at his best is uh, hard to stop. So, I mean, they're going to be two important players, aren't they? What do you want to see from your team early? Well, I'd, I'd like us to play our way. You know, if we can um, get on the front foot and do what we do, because I know that's what Hawthorne are going to do as well. So it's going to be who, who can play their way the longest. Now, you don't tag normally. This is the elephant in the room, isn't it? Is it? Um, are you going to tag Mitchell today? Uh, we're going to have a look at it. Yeah, we're going to see what um, what the game looks like in the first 10 minutes. All the best, mate. Thanks, Bruce. What an occasion. You've been here before as a player, but the first time as a coach. Nick Nat knew he's going to be so vital to Adam and the Eagles today. He still gets it inside. The ball is 50. And Nat Nui ready to go. Oh! onto the ground. I know that the Hawks, they're going to have huge support, but you feel like every team supporter that doesn't back for the Hawks that's going to be here will go for the underdog. That's true. What's really important at the moment, you're still about an hour and 20 minutes from the opening bounce, so because you have to do a stag a really extended warm-up, you've got to make sure that the players just stay calm, don't try and get yourself hyped up at this point. So that'll be the message I think we're reverberating between amongst the group out there. That's a really good mix for uh, West Coast forward, isn't it? Kennedy, obviously the big number with 80, but that's a that's a good spread. Lacroix, 44, Hill, Cripps and Darling, all capable of kicking bags. I mean, that is as potent as you'll get as a forward line. Just so important that they isolate that defence of Hawthorne. If they're able to play together, they'll go a long way to stopping this group, but they are as potent as any team in the comp, and that's why they're in the grand the, final. The one thing you think about Eagles too, they can kick the ball long and deep, yep. and Kennedy and the Ruckman can jump at the footy and Darling. I don't think Hawthorne can kick it long and deep and expect to mark it too many times. That's the one slight advantage the Eagles forward group has got. Add to that list, Shuey with 23, Nick Nat and Yo with 17 apiece. At the other end of the ground, Ruffy's done what he's done for a long time, but Gunston and Bruce, they've got 100 and... Well, I think they're great. I think their great strength, Hawthorne, is they don't rely on any one one four. That's a really nice spread, uh, similar to the Eagles. And ever since they got rid of, uh, not got rid of, since Buddy left the yeah. football club, I mean, they, they, there's just no reliance. They picked the right option. A lot of a uh, lot of agility and a lot of movement in there. And even Jared, Jared Ruffhead, we know he's their tallest forward, but he doesn't take many marks really deep. He's more a running, agile, uh, tall. So both the uncontested marks they generate about a 15 15 a game on average, but the Eagles three weeks ago kept them I think to four to three quarter time so the Eagles defence stopped the Hawthorne strength of being able to find forward targets uncontested marks virtually in their forward 50. Plenty of problems for Adam Simpson to concern himself with. Cyril's on screen. We all love Cyril and Tim Watson has got an official man crush on number 33. Welcome to you Tim. Thanks Hammer. I'm just behind Bruce as far as the man crush is on. Cyril is concerned but uh, he causes absolute mayhem. Let's just go back a little bit. We to when he was a kid. Here he is, junior, and he's just popping him through nonchalantly up there in the Northern Territory. And then here he is on the MCG. It didn't really matter what stage he was on. He was able to do it, and nothing has phased him. We've seen him kick some uh, remarkable goals over the journey, and that's what he does. He puts pressure by just being in the vicinity. People cough the ball up. We saw it again last Thursday night. This is the last quarter again. Two goals he scored, and that was just all all about pressure, all about the concern about Sirioli and you cannot discount him. It doesn't matter what game it is that he's playing in. That bloke on screen right now does cause mayhem and the Eagles will have to control him for four quarters because he can damage you in five minutes of footy. Absolutely, Tim. So Adam Simpson will be concerned with him. Alistair Clarkson will be trying to use him as a weapon and Clark on lethal caught up during the week to talk about the granny. It was strange because I was only thinking earlier in the week, you know, what was it like at this time 
last year, you know, and because yeah, it's a it's a hectic week. There's a lot of there's a lot of things on, and it's helped obviously that you've, we've been through it before, both as a playing group, coaching group, and as a club. You know that that assists us enormously. But I, I heard Simo say yesterday, yeah, we want to get off to a good start, and it's <laughs> it's every coach and teams wants yeah. that yeah, yeah. Yeah. you get off to a good so start. It goes it, <laughs> when you think about it, it shouldn't be any any more important than, than the second quarter either, you know, but the crowd and the emotion of the game and the prize at the end of it and the significance of it probably um, does make it a little bit different in terms of the approach to the game. They've done it. What a team. That culture, the bloods. Is the loss in 2012 just as important as reliving the joy of the last couple of years? I think so. We've experienced um, some significant uh, disappointment in um, in our journey as well. We've had some really, really tough preliminary final uh, losses and victories too. And you know, we quite often say to anyone who anyone who cares to listen about being involved in this game, if you if you don't want to put up with the the vast range of emotions that can be attached to the game, either don't be involved in the game or finish in the bottom half of the ladder. For us, it's just like we've been beaten by this mob two weeks ago. We know their talent. Uh, we know what they're capable of. And um, if we're not right on our game, we're going to come second on the weekend. Four consecutive grand finals. And on the big picture, obviously it's three in a row, the, the three, Pete, and in such an experienced group, does that become a slightly extra motivation? We've uh, we've addressed it from time to time, but uh, we, know, we know the harsh reality of the game is we're coming up against an opponent that if, if we if we don't just have a, uh, a real steely focus on what's required this week, then three, three beats are never going to be possible. The best team of the modern era of the last 50 years produces this masterpiece. Sometimes the door's going to open for you and other times it's going to shut in your face and when it shuts in your face you just want to hide away in a cave for about six weeks. Yeah. But uh, when it opens for you it's the most exhilarating experience to share that with 73,000 supporters but also also share it with the inner sanctum of the footy club that's worked so hard to, um, to achieve a collective goal. So Clarko, he's trying to become just the 12th VFL AFL coach with four flags. They are the coaches in the last 50 years who have won four. He's going to join some extraordinary company if he's able to do it. One man is on our right. It's not a bad group of uh, coaches there, is it? It's rarefied air to coach uh, four premierships, Lee. And he's, he's with one of his captains and uh, almost inevitably, if you have a, a sustained period of success, you've got fantastic on-field leadership from a, a core of players and certainly Hawthorne have got that, but Alistair Clark and has uh, taken that club 12 years ago from virtually down the bottom to, uh, to the fourth consecutive grand final. And Hodgie's trying to become just a seventh player to captain three premierships or more, so he's starting to do extraordinary things. He's already got a couple of Norm Smiths. Yeah. Maybe Mitchell, maybe Prittis today with a Norm Smith medal. They're the favoured way. How do you think Simo will attack Sam Mitchell? Oh, look, Hutchings may go to him for a period. I don't think it'll be a hard tag because they haven't done that all year. They'll back Matty Prittis at the stoppages against Sam Mitchell. That's, that's their great strength in and around the contest. They use the footy so well. Both lack leg speed, but their decision-making and their efficiency is right at the top of their game. That's that's going to be a great battle. As good as he is in close, so Mitchell, it's his leap work, I think, that, that really sets him apart because he is so good, kick right, left foot, goes left to right, handball. He creates so much that I just don't think you want him floating around on his own. Prittis is more a getter in tight. Hasn't really got the creativity with ball in hand that Mitchell's got, so they'll be in the same part of the ground, but very unlikely, I think, that they'll be very often a, a direct matchup. So second and third in the Brownlow. Mitchell already a premiership captain. Luke Hodge, as we said, trying to become the seventh player to captain three premierships. We caught up with Luke and asked him quite simply, what motivated him about grand finals? It doesn't matter what day it is in a big day or a home and away game. If you've got a simple role to play, that's all you've got to focus on. If anyone who tries to do too much on a big occasion normally fails. Once you've played in a grand final uh, and you lose it, the 2012 one probably sticks in my mind the most. You had the opportunity for success with your teammates and you blew it. I probably think about that more than the, than the previous two years. It's the best match of 2011 and Collingwood win. I get motivation from the embarrassment of 2011, prelim loss, the, the embarrassment of 2012 grand final loss. Having that feeling in your guts makes you never want to have it again. They've never been better than this.
Simo is the best educator that I've come across in footy. He's fairly fresh out of the game. You know, only seven, seven years ago he retired, so he still knows how, how it works as a player and what our needs are, and he seems to be able to relate really well. He's able to find the best out of every player, I think. He just can squeeze every ounce of your ability out of you. This is a terrific educator. He, he gets his message across clearly and, and he's able to develop um, certain traits in, in players very quickly. He can be one of the boys. Uh, I think it just ma makes him so approachable. But, you know, game day we know he's the coach. He, he doesn't like a dull moment, so he loves, I guess, the unity side of it, making sure the boys are pretty close, but at the same time having fun and enjoying the footy. West Coast Hawthorne Grand Final. Big winners, West Coast. He's played a lot of finals, Adam Simpson. He's a two-time premiership player. Great shots from the chopper. The Virgin Australia spider cam will keep us updated from above all afternoon. He's just 39 years of age, Duck. 306 games as a player. He's a teammate of yours. We see him as a very conservative coach in regard to what he says. What sort of a fella is he? Uh, very calm, very relaxed uh, fellow, very relaxed player. He uh, always liked to muck around a little bit. In actual fact, quite immature in some ways but had a serious side to him. He's done wonderfully well and it doesn't surprise me that the players are playing for him because he's just a really good guy. We said, oh, 39's young. And we said, Lee, how old were you in 1990? 38, yeah. Another record. Another Lee record. Does. A coach can be a stress carrier. He exudes a confidence and a calmness that is really good for his team. Do you think as a player being here before will help, but also as an assistant coach, he's been here with Clarko? Absolutely. He, he knows the routine, so he knows how to play and the routine from the Eagles' point of view. Just in regard to the ground itself, we talked about just one game here this year for the Eagles. I'll get your thoughts on that because I think we've got to go to the retiring motor uh, cade, but they've hardly been here. Let's, let's go down to Craig Willis for the motorcade for the retiring players. Ladies and gentlemen, today we continue the grand final tradition of honouring those who have retired from the game. Let's welcome the Nova Rising Star, Jesse Hogan of Melbourne, and the Nova Oz Kicker of the Year, Will Ledieu. Football Woman of the Year, Jan Cooper. the Western Bulldogs and Melbourne, Daniel Cross. And with him from the Sydney Swans and St Kilda, Adam Schneider. From Hawthorne, Brad Sewell. And from the Adelaide Crows, Rick Riley. Chris Newman, and from Melbourne and the Geelong Cats, Jared Rivers. From Port Adelaide, Kane Corns, and from the Sydney Swans, Reese Shaw. Andrew Carazzo, and from the West Coast Eagles and Carlton, Chris Judd. From Essendon, Dustin Fletcher, and from the Geelong Cats and Essendon, Paul Chapman. Luke McFarlane. And our newest legend of the Australian Football Hall of Fame, Tony Lockett.
as they make their way around the mighty MCG. Big two hours coming up this afternoon. The bounce at 2.30. It is just under an hour away. Some wonderful players saying farewell to the game this year. A couple of brown lows for Chris Jard, a premiership captain, Norm Smith medalist, 400 gamers, 40-year-olds, and Alistair Clarkson, perhaps for the last time, trying to influence the outcome of this afternoon's match. This is the most nervy time for the coach because, really, this is your last time to get the messages through to your players, and then, really, it's up to them until you see them again at quarter time. Yeah, this is a time where you really start to think about the game intently right now, both the players and, obviously, uh, the coach. So much experience here at the MCG. 63 games of grand final experience for the Hawks. Just seven for the West Coast Eagles. Just back to that question quickly, Lee. One game here this year for the Eagles. Does it? Yeah, they've got a good thing. They've got to be, their form in Perth's been fantastic, but they've got to prove today on grand final day, can they bring it to Melbourne to the MCG? They're trying to put together a three-peat, their fifth grand final in eight years. So much to play out, but right now, Let's go down to the ground. It's time for the Virgin Australia pre-game show. So a great day for the umpires, Matt Stevick there, the 35-year-old in the middle, Brett Roseby, another 35-year-old. So for Matt, he's third, for Brett, he's seventh. And for Jeff Dalgleish, the 29-year-old from Western Australia, his first. So a great occasion for the umpires, a teacher and accountant, a health and safety officer, the three of them. I'm with Lee Matthews. It's an absolute privilege at this moment, Lee, to be at ground level as we go back inside. We saw when Alistair Clarkson was talking to the players about half an hour ago, both Hill and Stratton had the jumpers off. It, yeah. They've been out there for a while. It's been uh, pretty hot. Very warm. And they both did their warm-up about an hour before the game. And I don't know, they must have thought about whether you do that because that starts the sweaty process and therefore the dehydration process. But both sides did that. It's interesting this time of the game, Mac. I mean, all week it's like the anticipation of it all. And it gets to about now, it's trepidation. There's kind of almost the fear of the unknown of what's going to happen within the game. But you finally get to the point and say, OK, let's start it. Let's bring it on. Win, lose, or draw. Let's get over and done with. And that's about where the two teams are right now. And for Adam Simpson, all the work's done, is it? Yeah, pretty much. You know, as a coach, he's had his final message to the team. Now Shannon Hearn is the leader and the other on-field leaders, but particularly the captain. You take over from now on. And as we saw with that great documentary during week, The Chosen Few, the captains now give the final pep talk before they go to the positions uh, just a few minutes minute or so before game day. So now it is over to the players, and every coach knows you hand it over to the players. A little bit you might be able to do from the coach's box, but now it's a player's game. So the moment's about to arrive for the Eagles. Consolidation and playing your role has been the Hawthorne mantra all through the week, all 
through their staff, and that can sometimes ease the pressure. If I play my role, I'll have the confidence in the rest of us. The team can take care of itself. Lee, would Alistair Clarkson have memorised this word for word? Would he know exactly what he wanted to say? Uh, he may have. You think about what you might say, but a lot of it is just coming from the heart at the very last minute. Is it possible to be calm as a footballer right now? Well, in fact, the footballers have a remarkable calm. They'll never feed more alive. They're unbelievably stimulated, but they're doing what they're good at and that's sometimes the message that for all the hype and all the nerves you're feeling this is what you're born to do so that gives you confidence to go out and put it on the line because really for all the things you do in your life pretty much this is what they're best at we saw shannon hearn a moment ago we see a guy who's been there and done it yeah in so many ways hasn't he well that's the thing with hawthorne they're the been there and done it they've got the half a dozen captain coaches the hodge the mitchell lewis burgoyne gibson so they're a really vastly experienced team. And, but uh, history tells us sometimes the new kid on the block comes up better than the battle-hardened veteran. That grand final day has had many surprises over the years. Feels like the perfect storm. The great team, the giants of the competition against this team that's excited us all year. Lee can't wait for it to start. We'll be back with the national anthem, the toss of the coin, and the opening bounce right after this.